dudes and dudettes. So the day after the draft, let's see how close they got to any of my picks. And, you know, we'll see where any USC and Duke other players landed as well. So for the Lakers, for the first round pick, they went with a power forward out of Michigan named Moritz Wagner. He is pretty athletic and stuff. He did do really well. He led them all the way to the national championship. They did lose, but he still has a lot of talent. He's definitely the top player they're looking for, a pick and pop center type of deal. So, no, he'll work good with them. I just wasn't expecting that type of player that early, but they seem to fall in love with him. So he got picked first, and then the Lakers, second round pick, they went with, of all things, a European player, Isaac Bonga, I believe he's from Germany, small forward, 6'9 player. The only problem I have with this pick is that he won't come within a year or two because I guess he still needs time to develop, which kind of sucks because the Lakers need as many players as they can now to be able to play and compete. So it is kind of questionable that they went with this. So I'm kind of up and down about this. I don't know if they're even still going to keep him or not or if he's going to be a draft or, I'm sorry, a trade asset in the future, but we'll see. And then for their final second round pick, they went with Svi Mykulik. He's a shooting guard, small forward out of Kansas. He was one of the guys I wanted them to choose, but he was like towards the bottom of my list. I think he was the very last guy I said they should look at. And of course, they decided to choose him, even though there were a few other guys. But Chimezi Metu was still available, but you don't need him anymore since you had Wagner. So... Yes, overall, they got the top players they needed, top players they liked, and we'll see what that other European guy comes out to be, whether he does end up being a, a, even a player for them in a few years or they do trade him away. So as undrafted free agents, the Lakers did add Malik Newman. <clears throat> he, I knew of him. He was supposed to go to UCLA, but ended up transferring to Mississippi State to follow, I believe his name was Ben Howland, the coach at UCLA at the time. And they fired him, so he just decided to follow him. But it wasn't a good situation over there in Mississippi State, so he stayed out a year and transferred to Kansas. And this last year, he was pretty up and down. <clears throat> you never know what you're going to get. But, of course, when he played against Duke, he did really well. Had probably his best game in college so far. And pretty sure because of that game, he decided to come out early. But he did sign a two-way contract with the Lakers, so they could use him both the G League and during real games, too if they like so that's pretty interesting and then of all people they had it lastly pick up so far i know it's <clears throat> i believe it's an undrafted regular deal with uh, north carolina's joel berry he's a point guard guy but he could definitely score I, i've known him for the past four years so he's been a thorn in duke's side for a while but he is a talented enough player I'm surprised that any of these two guys didn't get drafted but that's how the draft goes sometimes so let's get going on to some Duke players and USC players that were drafted as well last night. And for Duke players, of course, none of them got on the Lakers, but it was pretty close where it could have been, but see where they landed. So Marvin Bagley went second to the Sacramento Kings. Looks like he's going to be able to have some playing time, but they do have like a lot of power forwards and centers there. Pretty sure there's going to be some more trades or letting go of guys. I'm sure Zach Randolph isn't going to be there very long, so good luck to him. Also have Wendell Carter Jr. getting drafted by the Chicago Bulls. He's going to be a very good uh, compliment to Laurie Markkinen, who was a very good standout rookie last year, who can you know, stretch the ball, shoot from three, a very athletic power forward slash center guy. So those two guys eventually starting in the future would be pretty awesome to see in the East. Then we also have Grayson Allen, surprisingly, getting picked as high as he did even before the Lakers pick number 21 to Utah, which is not surprising because Quinn Snyder was the next Duke player and Duke assistant coach. And of course they need someone like that to be able to shoot, be athletic as well, help out on some D. But of course Donovan Mitchell loved the pick. 
So when you choose a guy that they were rivals in college and he still uh, respects them and loves that he's on his team now, then you know that it's a good pick. Then the freaking Sacramento Kings drafted Gary Trent Jr., who I wanted for the Lakers, but then they ended up trading him away to the Portland Trailblazers for only two second round picks, which is surprising that it only cost that much and why didn't the Lakers do it? Because it was either Portland or the Lakers, according to the Kings, that were very high on Gary Trent Jr. as far as trades, but of course they're not going to benefit a team in their same division, so of course I can see why he went to Portland and only for second round picks, which sucks, but good luck to him. He's going to thrive very well in that system and maybe become a starter pretty soon for that team. Then we also have the lone guy who did not get drafted last night from Duke who came out early, the freshman park guard, Trevon Duvall. He did this morning sign with the G League, or not G League, but the Summer League team for the Houston Rockets. So he saw that they probably saw there's an opening there in case Chris Ball does not come back. So he has a chance. But plus, you know, if you go to a Texas team or a Miami team, you you guaranteed all that money anyways without those sales taxes. So good luck to him. He's a pretty intriguing player. If he puts everything together, then he could be pretty awesome in the NBA. So now let's get over to some USC players that did get ended up drafted as well last night. <music> Congrats to DeAnthony Melton and Chemezi Metu. Melton, they kept saying he was a late first round pick, but for some reason he slid all the way down to the middle of the second round to Houston. So they're kind of looking for a replacement for Trevor Reza if he does decide to leave. And he seems like he's kind of that same type of player, a 3 and D guy. So we'll see how that goes. It's a good situation for him. And, of course, the San Antonio Spurs had to get a really good player, in my opinion, Chemezi Metu. He's just going to be very productive in their system. Just even a more athletic version of Tim Duncan, in my opinion. But if he stays there a while, he should be... He should become a really good player and consistent player. I just hope it's not for too long. So thanks again for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what you all think. Draft was pretty good yesterday. Obviously, these drafts go on way too long. Almost like four. It was actually a, almost a five-hour thing last night. Just, just to even get to the Lakers' first pick, it took like almost three hours, which is just insane. They need to cut this time, the times down. But of course, all it is is just marketing and getting sponsorships so of course you have to show all these stooge commercials but like i said thanks again for watching enjoy your weekend and have a great day